Hey guys, Jason here. Uh, like I said, in my, <laughs> I tried to make another video here, but again, my flash recorder bombed out of me in, within like, uh, I think six, seven minutes. So anyways, I hope it doesn't do that again. So I guess I was going to talk about something, but uh, it's not really important. What's important is uh, what you need to understand um, about something about my life, you know, uh, like, um, again, I appreciate you all, right? You guys are all important. And um, and this is about death, okay? And uh, many people you all have lost during this time, and it's been a hard time for almost everyone. And when we lose someone special, and that, that's the most hardest thing, right? And this is what Christians do not seem to understand. Right, every person on this earth are very, is very special, regardless if they don't know what Christianity is or who God is. It doesn't matter. What matters is you keep your loved ones close, because when you lose someone, they're not coming back. And each person that you uh, you encounter, they leave a, a special mark in your in your soul, and this is what gives us life. Right, and uh, regardless of the Christian belief of uh, brothers, sisters, and all that, we're all related. Okay, we're all one people. And today, you see what Israel's doing to the innocent children because of uh, the anger of uh, people losing their land and their homes and their livelihoods. And this is what greed does. Right, and uh, Thanksgiving is coming up. American Thanksgiving, and uh, on that day was the day I found my last name, uh, November 23rd in 2019, right? Um, Isaiah 22, 22, right? Which is what is basically telling you is that Re Revelation 22 is the end of the biblical story because God's here. And uh, whether you believe that or not, it's here, Okay. Because we're at the point is in uh, Acts 2.17 that God pours out his spirit. And that's what I've been doing. Right? Because it's not the end of days. It's the end of religions. This is what you need to understand. And uh, this is uh, ties into uh, e uh, Exodus 34.7. You know, the two sevens I was telling you about. Which is talking about, you know, uh, the guilty. They're not getting away with their crimes. Right, you know, I'm going to talk about Paul or Saul. You know, Saul corrupted the church, right, after he killed Jesus. And he's not getting away with his crimes. Anybody that causes murder on the innocent, right, they're not getting away with it. They think that they're going to get away with it. They're going to think that they, by Jesus' death, you're saved. You're not saved by Jesus' death, right? You're saved by God, okay? And this is what... People don't understand. They want to shove God in the mud. But God's not going anywhere. Because Jesus warned you that you're all going to see. And you're going to stand before God. And that's what I'm trying to show you. Right? And anyways, I want to tell you about... Uh, uh, as you know, I'm in kidney failure. Right? Um... Like I said, I uh, shot myself with an impulse nailer in, uh, when I was 22 years old, which damaged my kidneys, right? And I didn't go into kidney failure not till 2009, right? Uh, about the time my son was born. Uh, the son, when my, my youngest son was born um, in a difficult transition period of my life. My daughter was just young. Right, and the mother was uh, in uh, confusion about her uh, sexuality, right, and uh, she didn't know where she, she fit in. Like most people, you know, when you become, uh, when you have traumatized, when you're, you have trauma when you're an innocent child, right, and when you experience that trauma as the experienced child, right, those memories stay with you. So when I think about the damage that these Israeli soldiers are invading Gaza right now, you know, the, the, these these idiots, 
these Israeli idiots have no damn clue what they're actually doing. Right? And any soldier can tell you, we just, ex we just passed Remembrance Day. And any soldier can tell you, they all suffer PTSD. Because it stays with the people. And these soldiers, they're going to understand when they realize the innocent children that have died at the hands of their, hand, of, of their blood. And these Jewish priests, they, they make me sick. Because they're sitting there celebrating, saying, oh, we're winning this war, we're winning this war. No one wins when it comes to war. Everybody should know that. We've just experienced World War I. If anybody understands World War I, it was a very terrible war. You have to understand that, you know, nobody wins. The only one that wins are these greedy politicians, these idiots, these sick-minded freaks. They sit in their little smoking their cigars thinking they run the world. They don't. The people do. And these are the people I'm trying to reach. But the people are in a confusion right now. They're confused by religion. Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, they're all evil. If you identify yourself as one of those religions, you need to come out of now. Because God is not having it. Do you understand? Because God gave a strict warning. He does not forgive those that shed innocent blood. And the soldiers that died in World War I and World War II, they were just children. They are just babies. Why can't these leaders of ours, they go to war, they go fight. Don't send the innocent to die. When these freaks can't even shake hands and hug. Because this, this, this earth that we're in right now, it belongs to God. It does not belong to these leaders. All these corporations, these clowns, these greedy pigs, the demons that are sitting there collecting money on your backs. They don't care about you. They're jacking up the food prices. They're making it difficult for people to eat. And they can't get along. They, these CEOs, they're sitting in their luxury penthouses, right? You know, laughing at every human being that's on the planet right now suffering. Same with these, these, you know, Justin Trudeau. He's a clown. Uh, uh, President Biden. He's a clown. Right? The Ukraine president. He's a clown. The Russian president. They're all clown. China uh, president. He's a clown. All these leaders of ours. They're all clowns. They're the ones that need to go sit in a step in a, step in a boxing room and fight it, it out between themselves. They're just boys. If you guys have any uh, heart and courage, like I'm fighting for everyone right now, I'm fighting people for my life. I've been I'm I'm on dialysis. My arm is paying for your sins right now. You may not understand it the way the Bible understands it because you guys were all in a delusion, right? This is a prophecy that was coming, not was in the past, right? This is the problem. You guys think it's all in the past? It's happening right now. Just like when I died in 2016, and I'm going to show you that today. When, uh, like, nobody wants this responsibility, right? No, the, the, what I'm doing right now, I do. Not, I never wanted to do this, but I'm, I'm showing who I am, and I'm pouring out my spirit, you know, to the world right now, showing you, and you know, I'm, I'm. This is, I'm, I'm, be, I'm, I'm showing my bravery. Okay, in my culture, there are seven spirits. Okay, this is referred to the seven golden candlesticks in the throne room, right? Bravery, courage, right? Love, truth, right? Uh, wisdom, right? Um, uh, anyways, there's two more. <laughs> I just can't think them off the head. But anyways, you can you can Google it. It's uh, it's the seven grandfather teachings. Okay, and this is what I'm trying to teach the world. If you have those seven grandfathers teachers in your heart and you live by them every day, 
right? You will your your eyes will your eyes will open up, and each person that you interact with, those you ask those questions each time. Like if if let's say you walk you ran into this person, you know it's just the way he is, right? And it makes you uncomfortable. Well, you 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 judge yourself by those seven. Okay, and you conduct yourself accordingly. That's where I get my strength from. Okay, um, I kept the Bible my whole life. That, that's the faith. So if anybody tells you they have faith, they have no clue what faith is. Faith is hearing God's voice. That small voice that's throughout the Bible that nobody wants to read. Right? Thus saith the Lord. Or the Lord spoke. Or the uh, Lord God said this. Okay? If they can't read that and the commandments, they don't have faith. Okay, because faith is described in Jeremiah 23, 28. 23 again being this year, right? So anyways, what I want to talk to you about death. Since 2020, I lost a lot of people. And I've been trying to warn people, get right with the word of God, the Bible. And here and go back to the commandments because nobody should die nobody should and I've been trying to say that I've been trying to warn people right but nobody wants to listen to me they laugh at me they mock me and you know and they don't want to listen because they have Jesus Christ <laughs> the lie Jesus didn't come to save people Jesus came to the sinners to get them to repent and that's what you're supposed to be doing you're supposed to be repenting until you stand before the lord you don't go sit on youtube and say that oh i have this and i have this and use and you 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 demonstrate your ego that's what's sitting on on youtube and you know and blasting your mouth off like you're some freaking asshole you know what i mean you need to be live humbly and to be humble is not to declare that, oh, I'm, I'm saved by Jesus already, you know what I mean? And then go force your lies onto others. Oh, go go say you're saved by Jesus. You know, you're not going anywhere until you get to hell because you're not believing in Jesus. God does not force anything on anybody. God gives you the choice. And this is the beauty I'm showing you. Because you can make that choice yourself. By you reading what I'm trying to show you. And then once you understand how I'm showing you what this, this, how this word works, you can make the decision yourself. I'm not here to force anything upon you. Right? I'm, I'm not here to, to, to force anything. You have that opportunity to make that decision yourself. That's the freedom of choice. That's the love of God. Not to be in this... Christian system to, to say for them to come with their evil porn fear porn to say oh you're not going to heaven because you don't believe in Jesus <laughs> that's the most biggest lie there is so anyways yes uh, as you know I shot myself with an impulse nailer in uh, when I was 22 years old right and uh, this was in 1998, right? And uh, the verse is described in uh, Isaiah 22:23, right? For I'll, I'll, I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place, for he'll be a glorious throne for his father's house, right? And um, which pretty much led my life accordingly. See, I've known this since I was a boy, what I had to go through. And when I was 12, 13, I used to train. Right? I used to train hard knowing that I'd have to go through this this dialysis and this kidney failure and, and even death. Right? So I train my mind and my body even today because I'm alone. I've been alone since uh, the day I started talking about God's word. Because nobody wants to hear God's word. Nobody does. So... I became I pretty much isolated myself right I didn't choose to be isolated. I like to be around people and you know and you know watch them smile and watch you know people live life and you know I like to be part of the of people's lives but I can't be 
because people do not accept the word of God. And that's my name. And I've been trying to sanctify the, the real name, my name, right? Which is basically purifying everyone. Because today, everybody is dead, spiritually dead. This is why people are dying. Because people have this understanding that when you die, you go to heaven. Uh, no, you don't. You're, 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 you do you not see that you're in a, you, you, the body's in the grave? The spirit wanders after that. Because they don't have the seal of God, my name. And then they, wa they wander for eternity. This is the eternal fire. Their spirits are, are wandering forever for life because they never knew what that seal of God is. See, that seal of God, right? That your spirit will be born again in a new life. This is the born again part of This is like reincarnation. This is what Jesus was trying to teach. So these Christians, when they're thinking, oh, you got to believe in Jesus and you'll be born again. No, you have to die first. This is where the faith comes from. <laughs> right? So this idea that they think that heaven is death, right? No, in, in Isaiah it talks about, you know, God comes and gives you, like he says, he just, like we all understand, you know, heaven and earth will pass away. Jesus said that. He's trying to tell you that's a new understanding. You're going to understand what heaven actually is. And that's what I'm trying to show you. Right? Heaven is uh, data. You know, this the computer systems, you know, all that. That's what it's talking about. So when I die eventually, right, this information that I've rec I'm leaving behind, it's going to remain. That means that those people that do access this information, it's still going to be here. For them to be, you know, for help them walk with the Bible. That's my goal. My goal is to get people to understand what the Bible is saying. Not to force a religion upon you. My name is your ticket into, into the new life that you'll be given. Okay? That's the gift of God. And that's the beauty of the word. That God himself returns to the earth and helps you through this life right that's that's the promise right so these false teachers that are sitting on youtube right now they're facing condemnation because it says if you're declaring god's word in front of god you've already condemned yourself because you lack knowledge because you're instructed to wait upon the lord but they, they're jumping the gun. This is the condemnation part. This is the, the part where Daniel was speaking about, right? Some shall awake to everlasting life and some to everlasting shame. So if you're on YouTube lying and beaking off and like Aaron from God's a Minute channel, <laughs> right? He just, uh, he's just uh, the biggest mocker of God. He assumes this, and assumes that, and assumes this. The reason for it is because he has such a grand following. And I can just imagine back in before YouTube, he was probably a loser. No one cared to hang around with him. But suddenly, all of a sudden, he's on YouTube. He's got a grand following because everyone's listening to the lie. <laughs> so anyways, as you know, I'm in dialysis, uh, my arm. Which is, which is already fulfilling. So, this is the medical information. All right. This is, uh, I had, uh, I was at St. Paul's Hospital. I tore my knee ligaments, right? By slipping down some stairs. And I had an operation. In that operation, they did both, they, they reattached my knee ligaments. Right? And I was bedridden. <laughs> right and uh the hospital attempted to do a surgery within five weeks and based on my uh investigation i'm trying to i'm trying to sue because what they did is they uh they caused me to be overdosed they killed me but if you you know this is what they don't understand oh they don't understand they knew exactly what they're doing 
I've been trying to get a lawyer. No lawyer wants to take my case. But anyways, because I'm a native, right? So I've accepted that. The racism, the evilness, right? So anyways, uh, when I coded blue, so they gave me double and, you know, ants of right here, right? They gave me double before the double nurse surgery, right? So that it, that stuff was still in my bloodstream when they attempted to do the parathyroidectomy, right? right? So I coded blue and uh, I uh, coded blue on this day. March 10th, 2016. So that's 2 7, right? 9 8, right? 3 plus 5 is 8, right? So 9 8 is 17, right? So this is when I was released from the hospital, right? Because I, I, let me tell you, I got out of the hospital quite quick because. It was, uh, anyways, if anyone understands being in a hospital, how busy it is, right? It's just non it's nonsense. So that number is 310, right? 310, you know what I say about 310, you know, just remove the zero, it's 13, <laughs> right? So if you look, the Bible verse, anything that typed in 310 in the Bible, if you just type it in, in Google, it tells you a story, right? See, August 2nd. So if you look at the number here, 1976, right? My birth year. 7 plus 6 is 13. 9 plus 1 is what? 10. 10, 13. And remember my last video in uh, Deuteronomy 10, 13. Keep the commandments of the Lord thy God on this day, right? Which was Friday the 13th of this year, right? Jason lives, right? 8, 2, right? Or 2, 8, right? 2, 8. Is Joel 2.28. God will pour out his spirit. Right? Which is Acts 2.17. 1 plus 7 is 8. 2, 8. Right? In the last days, God will pour out his spirit. This is the time we're in right now. Okay? I was 39 years old when that happened. Right, and we know that uh, Saul was the murderer. So this is, so when they think it happened in the past, it's actually happening now. So when when I went the night before the operation, I knew something was going to happen, and I knew that this was going to be the the fulfillment of uh, the death on the cross. Okay, uh, it wasn't an actual cross. Just because you go watch a movie, that's not how it happened. It's happening right now, right? Not the way you think it's happening. If it happened in the past, it happened in the past, but it's it repeats itself, but this time in a modern way. All right, so I was at St. Paul's Hospital, you know, Paul being the murderer, right? Right, St. Paul's. But unfortunately, after intubation, he became unstable with hypoxia. All right, and hypothesis, and he was resuscitated in the OR. All right, and then they I was on life support. All right, but like I said, that wasn't guaranteed. They they told my aunt, like my aunt said this to me when I was awake. They said they were they were going to pull the plug on you because there was no he I wasn't expected to wake up right but I beat it because everyone thinks at life after death you know they're gonna say all this bullshit no you do you will stand before the throne that's what that is that I, I seen that I seen five books right and five beings and th th I, I couldn't say anything Eventually, I'm here. As soon as I got up, I, I was able to, I was, I was aware and I was uh, functioning, you know, and it was just troubling me. 
seeing those five books, five books, five books, five books. Right? You know, I like I keep saying I have a gift. I'm, I, have, I I just know things, right? So I automatically went to Google and typed in five books, right? What popped up was 2nd Maccabees 2.23. Notice the numbers, 2, 2, 23, right? That's uh, Jason of Cyrene had five five books and he brought them into one, right? That's what I seen. And I'm like, whoa, right? Those five books are the five smooth stones, the books of uh, Moses, right? And basically what's happening is that I'm bringing everybody together is what that verse is saying. So I thought I'd show that to you, that this has been fulfilled, right? The, the episode on the cross, because what I'm trying to show people that the operating table, I see it was, an, it was a cross operating table. You see that? Here's the woman laying there with the arms. That's how my arms were, was. My arms were out like that, right? And my left, my uh, right arm is where they injected, uh, you know, the sleeping agent. And when, as soon as they, uh, that day of the operating, right, I could feel that, that stuff going through my arm and it started burning. And I'm like, there's something wrong here. There's something, you know, I knew they started, pat I was like trying to tell them there's something. Then they put the oxygen mask over my face. Like they were, they were just purposely trying to, you know, I was trying to tell them there's something wrong here. And then they covered my mask. And there I just couldn't breathe. I was, I, I was like, I was panicking. I was just suffering. I was just trying to, I was, you know, I knew something was wrong. My arm felt like it was on fire. Right? I was overdosing. And that was it. I was gone. That fulfilled my death on the cross, operating table. But they weren't expecting me to come back. But I'm here today. I defeated death. Right? Because I'm, I have, I'm, I'm, I'm here to share a message, and that message is understanding what the Bible is. I'm fulfilling my job, <laughs> right? My name, right? This is the the true holy name. My name. And this is the message, that, the last message that I'm putting out, right? The random acts of kindness day, right? You can Google that. It'll give you exactly what I'll show you. February 17th, you know, 2024. Aquarius, right? So this is, you can understand what actually this means now. Genesis 711, which is Jason, right? July, August, September, October, November, right? In the 600th year of Noah's life in the second month, February, on the 17th day of the month, right? The same, the same day where all... The fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were were opened. All right, second day of the month, the same day. So this is talking about a second time, which is happening now. So what I've been trying to tell people, we're in the time of Genesis. <laughs> right? Because Revelations ends with chapter 22. After 22, it's done. That's it. It's it's finished. That's the end of the prophecy. And then it starts over again. This is why we have Genesis 20 or uh, chapter or chapter 2 verse 2. The seventh day God finished his work and he rested on the seventh day. 7-7. Seven, seven. Now if you look at that, 2-2 two, two, and then 7-7, seven, 7-2-7-2, seven, seven, two, seven, two, which is 7-11, 7-11. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell you. It happens twice. Once in the beginning and once in the end. Right? So, the great deep broken up. You know, the great deep broken up, which is talking about the darkness. You know, because I'm, I'm the light destroying the darkness. Okay? And then the windows of heaven were opened, which is, you know, we're all 
you're looking at my this with a window, whether it be a smartphone or actual computer screen. That's a window, <laughs> right? And that's what that's talking about. And the floodgates is is referring to Aquarius. If you if you look at the what Aquarius is, it's like a being putting water onto the earth, right? That's my name, Campo Camp Water, right? And the name Jason it's found in Acts seventeen verse five. So if you look at these numbers, one plus seven is eight, eight five. Matthew five eight, which is thirteen, right? Is Blessed are the pure in heart; they shall see God. Jesus is warning you that your Jesus is, or your everyone's going to stand before God, and this is the time that we're in. Whether you believe who I am or not, it doesn't matter. This is being fulfilled, regardless of what you think. Either you get it, either you stand with me, or you're against me. It's as simple as that. I'm sanctifying my name. Right? Jeremiah 7 11. Is this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, I have seen it, saith the Lord. Yeah, they're all on YouTube lying. <laughs> right? That's why Jesus said this in Matthew 16 20, which is 7 2. Then charged he disciples that should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. <laughs> He's trying to tell you. Christian, Jew, and Muslim. This is the divided house. This is the devil's divided house. These are the guys causing this whole nonsense throughout the world. <laughs> you go on YouTube right now. Oh, rapture this. Oh, oh, uh, you you worship me or else uh, and I, I lead you. You know, that's how they act. The, the ego behind all these false teachers. And it's all about money with them. Mark 3.25 And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Mark 3.26 And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand, but has an end. So when the Christians are talking about, oh, end days, end days, all this, what's coming to an end is... Exodus 34, 7, which is talking about God comes onto the scene, right? The sins of the fathers, third, fourth generation, right? The time that we're in, they're, they're going to be held for account. They're not getting away with the crimes. Just because the Christian religion tells you this, 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 it doesn't believe anything. Just because Paul says this, the murderer, you know, he only has letters. They're not scripture. This is what they think. They think, oh, just because it's in the Bible, oh, it, it's truth. No, it isn't. They're only letters. It's just a man's opinion. That's it. What's important, what scripture actually is, is God's voice. When it says, thus saith the Lord. When Lord God says this, I have said this. When it talks like that, this is what the Christians do not want to read. Because in their minds, oh, Jesus died on the cross and we're scot-free. Uh, no, you're not. Because God is still sovereign. And it's God that brings the judgment, brings down the hammer. <laughs> that nobody's getting away with their lies. Nobody's getting away with their crimes. This is what Revelation 21 verse 8 tells you. All liars, all idolaters, which is those that are Christ and Messiah worshippers, those are idolaters. All right? The golden calves. They're worshipping the golden calf, created with men's hands. Unless the Christ and Messiah is in the commandments, where God says, well, I, I'll send the Christ and the Messiah among you. And you follow them. It does not say that. <laughs> There's God said, right? Have no gods before me. I am a jealous God. There is, Jesus was trying to reaffirm this, like I said, right? In Matthew 4 7, because I'm 47 years old, 
right? Do not tempt the Lord thy God. Okay, this is what everybody's doing right now. Because what everybody's doing on YouTube right now, they're drawing God out. You know what I mean? They're tempting God right now is, is what they're doing. Because, oh, I know this, I know that. Oh, I know this, I know that. They're, they're drawing God out of his hiding place is what they're doing. Because God's getting pissed off. He sees the lying and the corruption and the evilness and the wickedness. You know, the wicked imaginations in the world. This and this and this. Especially there's a there's this channel called Robin's Hood. My goodness, I just... The, okay, look. Prior to 2014, okay, probably about 2011, maybe earlier than that. I used to watch this one channel. His name was Earth Adams, right? I don't know where he is now. He just seemed to disappear from the face of the planet, right? And he was doing the exact same thing as Robin's Hood was doing, you know? He has a look at look at his channel, Robin's Hood. What he's doing right now, he's uh he's taking all these worldly miracle signs, and everyone's amazed by it. Well, yeah, you're supposed to stay away from that because that's how the devil works. Because if we go back to the book of Moses, right? What Moses was showing all these miracle signs and wonders to the for Pharaoh. Well, let my people go now because this is the power of God. You know, uh uh just you know, because Moses had that gift, you know, of magistry and sorcery, right? He thought he could get away with, you know, the Pharaoh would be smart enough, you know, to let his people go. But it didn't happen that way because the Pharaoh came along. Well, guess what? I got guys like too, like that too. <laughs> so so what, what I've been trying to tell you about overcoming, you have to overcome the worldly things that you see in the earth. And every miracle comes from the Bible. So this is what I'm trying to show you what the miracles are, right? How they connect. This is right from the God. This is how the miracles work. Right? Not if you see this and this and this and this out in the will and will. It's like when I showed you my pictures of 7-Eleven and all that, you know. Right? I could show that all day. I could walk around with a video camera and do the exact same thing. Because everybody, is, I've, I'm, I'm trying to help them. And everybody has this power right now because Jesus was trying to warn you during this time, everybody's going to have this gift. This is what you have to stay away from. You have to resist the devil's temptations of that. That's the devil's wor at work. Showing you all these signs in the world and forgetting the Bible. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So what Robin's Hood does is, ah, you don't need you don't read these scripts. You know what I mean? Because he is the thief on the cross. You know, you know the the other thief on the cross. You know, the one thief. He he says, "Oh Lord, you know, I, I I believe me. I can you let me in your kingdom?" And then Jesus said, "Oh, because you have faith, you will be with me, with me." And then the other thief started mocking him. That's what this Robin Hood's channel is doing. Because he sees these signs, he thinks his God is showing him all this. Well, his God is the devil. <laughs> you know, and I've been trying to help, but he, he's stubborn because he's stuck on this. And because he got he, he he went and did a he went and stole something, right? He got caught, right? And he went to jail. Oh, he found God. Well, if he found God, he would not have went to jail in the first place. <laughs> you get my point? Because the God of Israel, the true God, the one I'm trying to show you my name, right? He gave commands, thou shalt not steal. Because he already stole the God that his, he thinks he's serving, it's the devil. That's what's showing him all these miracle signs. So this guy back, Earth Adams, right? He, he was under the impression that was God that was showing him those signs too. So he was proving it on these, his video camera. And he was just like amazed by it. He was showing me, look at this, look at this, right? And he had a, he had a great following, right? And I was trying to warn him that you're going to go crazy, guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that's how the devil works. He plays tricks with you. And that's his purpose. This is why Jesus told you, right? Tell the devil to leave, right? And he will leave, <laughs> right? So...
And I'm trying to get you to understand what the Bible is because that's my goal. My goal is to get you reading your Bible again. And then once you understand it, because I'm the key, you know, because for every kingdom you need water, right? If without water, your kingdom dies. Okay? Because I'm the living water, right? My name, Camp Water, that's living water. <laughs> Right? Sorry, I'm just my. I, I took a shower earlier and my skin gets so dry. I didn't put any uh, lotion on my skin yet. Right? <laughs> so that's why you're going to see me squirming around a bit because it has to do with my kidney disease, right? The phosphates in my blood. Right? Because last yesterday I, I fell asleep and I missed dialysis, you know. And you know, in Regina, it's not like uh, the place where I started in Saskatoon, right? You know, if I miss dialysis, they'll, they'll immediately get me a, a time right away, right, to catch up. In Regina, I've been here for eight years. You know what I mean? Each time that I tried to tell them like that, oh, it's like, oh, they broke, I broke their arm, you know? No, we can't do that, Jason, you know? It's so difficult for them. So I can't stand Regina. They're just freaking hypocrites in Regina. I can't stand, you know, it's just, it's, it, I, I, I know the evils there, right? The manager, I outright called her a devil, which she was, right? Because, because I'm a status Native American, right? And I have, um, and there's a treaty that stipulates that I'm giving, I'm, I'm granted all the medical necessary uh, equipment necessary, you know, because it's part of the treaty. I'm able to get, like, I'm able to get glasses. I'm able to get uh, uh, all the med. Like, if I had a, a, a splint or needed crutches or. A, a walker or anything I do with anything to do with medically, it would be provided for me. Okay, that's what I'm granted. So I come to SAS Regina. The, the dialysis chairs are shit. They're busted. They're crap. And then they then they have the, the medical beds. They're just worse. In Saskatoon, they have these dialysis chairs. They're like. They're, they're like what you see here, right? Right, but like a chair design, you can, they're automated, you can lay flat and this and, and I have never had no problems doing my dialysis. I would complete the four hours. These past two years, since my operation, I just had an operation about a year ago, I had a tumor on my spine. And I do believe that was from the COVID vaccine, right? You know, I'm trying to get debt dealt with like I said, nobody's willing to help me, right? So I had a tumor on my spine, right? And here, um, I've been trying, and then probably about probably about two months until before my I, I went paralyzed at dialysis, right? About two months, I mean two weeks. I've been trying to see emergency doctor. I'm trying to see a family doctor. I'm trying to see a doctor in St. Regina. They kept giving me, trying to give me opioids. Oh, here's for your pain without actually doing an MRI to see what the problem is. <laughs> right, that's what I've been trying to request. So I kept bouncing from different emergency rooms and they wouldn't give me nothing. They wouldn't even do the MRI. They wouldn't even do these tests to confirm anything. Go, here's, here's, here's a, here's a, uh, oh, uh, I can't remember what they were giving me. Uh, I, I, uh, Hydromorph hydromorphone, something like that, right? And and I said, why are you giving me this? Just let me see what's going on the what's what what's what's going on with my my back. Even I know better to do an MRI. I was requesting, oh, it's not necessary, Jason. Here, take this and call us in the morning. This sort of deal, right? So finally, uh, I went to uh, the general hospital where I do my dialysis at the general hospital, right? I went to the emergency room and I was there for almost 12 hours, maybe longer, right? And then I went home and I said, I can't wait anymore, right? I told that to the, I said, I just want to see a doctor. Why, why are you guys making it so difficult? Right? And I couldn't wait any longer. I was, I was just exhausted. So I went home and went to sleep, and then that same day I had dialysis. So I went to dialysis as my as my routine, right? And 
And then I went, I went, fell asleep, fell asleep through dialysis. As soon as I got up, I couldn't stand up. My lit, my whole body was paralyzed. So they got me a room immediately, and they had Doctor uh, Kumar <laughs> of all doctors, Kumar. You know who Harold and Kumar is, right? <laughs> Doctor Kumar. So, and you know, I'm, I have a humor, you know, like that. And, I make everybody seem to laugh every time through my conditions and it's something just to lighten the load, right? So they, Dr. Kumar, right, immediately scheduled an MRI for me. So they got it done, right? And they discovered there was a tumor in the back of my spine, which is blocking, you know, which causing my, paral my paralysis, right? So Dr. Kumar said, we have to do this operation right away, otherwise you'll be permanently, uh, paralyzed so we have to get this done asap so they got me into the operating room right away and they got it done do you see what i mean i i need help in suing this medical system because they're not helping me here in regina they're in violation of the treaty of proper care anyways uh, that's the little part of the story what i've been what I've been experiencing these past days. But that's why I said, this is the struggle I'm facing. This is the fight. So I'm fighting for my life right now. So, which is being fulfilled with all this is happening right now. So I wanted to bring your attention to the, like I said, the operating table. This is what I've seen. So when I seen that in a, on a March, uh, 10th of 2016 it just hit me at that moment I knew that this is the fulfillment of the cross okay again that I would bear the cross again right but again I overcame it by the power of the word God's voice because I kept the faith in God's voice. And I kept Jesus' words and his commands not to follow the Christ idol. I was the one who held fast. That's why I was granted my life here today again. This is what nobody wants to believe. But if you notice today in these churches, all these people die, all these Christians. And here are these Christians today, rapture, oh, Jesus is going to take me up in the clouds. <laughs> no, that's a lie. Explain to me all these good Christians that are dying. <laughs> they can't. But they still keep on going with their rapture lie. All these, all these people that die, all these good Christians, they're very good people too. Right? So what makes them special from the ones that are dying? I had this one friend. His name was uh, Ed Cooper. I could say he's, he's one of my, he's my best friend. Like he, he helped me, uh, like I lost my license when I had a stroke, right? And he was always there. Anytime I needed help, he was always there. That is a very good Christian. Okay. If I, if, 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 if there was a good description on what a good Christian is, he was a Christian to go out there and help in the community. He helped a lot of native people. But he, like I said, he had a past. Right? But when you go out and help others, which you're supposed to do, right? I'll be right there. And which I was. I was, I was right next to him. And if he would have knew that I was with him, that's what it says, that God returns to the earth, he's in the midst of the people. And I am. Right, you know the, the the little boy that I was that was disregarded by his parents, that was me. Right, the little boy that held fast to the Bible, that was me. That little boy that went trying to teach the Bible to other other kids and all that, and I was getting mocked and bullied, that was me. I would go home crying because I would be hurt by all these kids bullying me 
because I held fast to the Bible. I, even this day, I still read the Bible to people everyone I, everywhere I go. I show them these miracles with the Bible, and they're like, wow. <laughs> and I get people reading the Bible again. That's the miracle. Right? My doctor, when I came to, she said, Jason, you should not be here today because you, your parathyroidism, you should not be here alive, Jason, <clears throat> today. So she calls me a miracle. And I'm trying to show you my strength is from the power of the voice of God in the Bible. I'm just showing you who I am. I'm the fulfillment of this Bible. This is why it's coming to an end. It's finished. I have finished it. I have finished my story. My testimony. The testimony is God's uh, voice. That's the testimony of the Bible that you should be keeping. Not just because this you were an alcoholic one day and all of a sudden you, you decide to go, oh, I see in Jesus Christ. Uh, no, that's not the testimony God I'm, I'm looking for. I'm looking for what I'm showing you. But nobody has it. This is why God has to come to the earth and pour out his spirit. So those that are have their lamps ready, right, will take the holy oil that I'm sharing for their lamps. So their your lamps can bright, be bright. And the, the, the oil is actually, right, the, the law. Right? The, the law is the light. Not where they think, oh, Jesus is the light. You know, they have no clue what that means. Jesus kept the commandments. What, what made him the light? Okay? So, I thought I'd show you that. Acts 2.17 And it shall come to pass in the last days. Okay, this is the time we're in right now. The last days for the Christians and the Jews and the Muslims. Or all the religious, I should say. Saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Okay, semicolon. I mean, uh, colon. And, now, now you need to pay, pay attention to this because this is what the Christians use to justify their their stupid dreams. See, God doesn't give the dreams. Okay? People are going to just have dreams anyways. This is what this is talking about. Okay? This is the temptations you got to stay away from. Okay? Because this is the point we're in right now. Because you go on YouTube right now, I have a dream this, I have a dream, I have a dream, I have a dream, I have a dream. <laughs> Obviously, that's going to happen. That's why it's saying, your sons and daughters shall prophecy. And what do you think they're doing right now? You go on YouTube right now, type in rapture or whatever. I had a dream. I had a dream. And they all have different dreams here. <laughs> but that's not what it's... But, uh, you're seeing the fulfillment is basically what this is. Right? So there's a, the, the supporting verses. Right here, Deuteronomy 13.30, 13, Ecclesiastes 5.3, Jeremiah 29.8 and 9, Jude 1 and 8. So if you look those verses up, you'll, you'll be, you'll, these are, this is your sword to destroy these filthy dreamers. So 2 Peter 2.4, 17, you know, 2.4, which is next year. 17 is Acts 17, right? Where the name Jason's found, Right? Acts 17. For time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Okay, whose house? Jason's house. Okay. Begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? Question mark. So, the Christians are in the idea the gospel of Christ supersedes the gospel of God. Uh, no, it doesn't. The gospel of Christ is, is a man's doctrine. It's not from God. Because God pours out his own gospel. And this is the correct gospel. 
So anybody that preaches another gospel, stay away from him, especially the gospel of Christ. It's nothing but lies. There's only one gospel, and that's the gospel of God. Because Jesus is trying to tell you, right, you cannot serve two masters. You'll hate one, and you'll love the other. So they're in love with the gospel of Christ, and they're hating God. So this is what this is talking about. What's going to be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? We're going, we're witnessing that right now, right? Because the trumpet, you know, everyone talks about, oh, the trumpet, once the trumpet sounds, you know, uh, the dead, the dead in Christ will rise. Well, you know, when Paul said that, he had no clue what he was actually talking about. The dead in Christ rise first, right? So those that gave up who believed Jesus, because Jesus told you there's no such thing as Christ, right? That's the dead in Christ. So those that are not believing the Christian lie about Christ this and Christ that, right, are dead in Christ. They're the ones that rise first, guys. Does that make sense? <laughs> People are like, wow, that makes sense. Yes, this is why you have to repent of men's false doctrines. There's only God's gospel. I'm trying to show you because God sanctifies his own name, right? Because it's about the Father in Heaven. That's what Jesus was talking about. I must be about my Father's business, he says. And I'm showing you Father, the Father's business. It's my business. <laughs> because I'm the fulfillment. Right? 2012. Which is Revelation 2012. Every, all the dead will stand before God. The resurrection of the dead, now get this, is Mark 12.25. Did anyone get that one? Did anyone catch that? Mark 12, 25. 12 being December, 25 being the 25th day. What day is that? Christmas Day. That's when the when the resurrection will be, you know, the they'll they'll be uh they'll be waking up like angels or the dead will rise. Right? <laughs> that's resurrection day. Mark 12, 25. So that's why you got to mark it. <laughs> and that's why we have Exodus 2012, or I mean, uh, Revelation 2012, all the dead will rise. I mean, uh, all the dead, which is spiritually dead, will stand before God. Okay? Because God gives you his spirit personally. That's how it works. That's why he talks about, because I'm trying to tell you, we're reaching the point of Pentecost. The fulfillment of it. It never happened in the past. It's happening now. The names that we're seeing in the Bible, they had no idea what the names were, so they just put them in there. The names that you're seeing today, right, the, the ones I've reached, the ones that are on my channel, have already accepted it. The 179 subscribers I have. <laughs> Honor the Father of Heaven. You know, that's what that means. And Mother Earth, right? So your goal is to take care of Earth. Right? That's what your instructions are. Genesis 2.15. To tend and keep the land. This is what you're supposed to be doing. Taking care of the trees. Planting the trees. Being garden keepers. Right? That's what you're supposed to be. Plant your seeds. You know? This is what your instructions are. This is how we restore the, the kingdom. Because earth is the kingdom. Deuteronomy 6.4 Hear, O Israel. Yeah, because Jesus is trying to tell you, if ye have ears to hear, you can't, ear, you can't hear if you're on YouTube, beacon off, right? In the Tower of Babel. <laughs> Deuteronomy 10.13 Which is just past. To keep the commandments of the Lord and the statutes which I command thee this day for thy good. Deuteronomy 10, 17. The Lord, thy, the Lord your God is God of gods, the Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty terrible, and regards not persons and nor takes reward. Deuteronomy 2, 20, verse 4, or 24, next year. For the Lord your God is he that goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. So they think Jesus saves because Paul says so? No. God himself is telling you he's coming to save you. 
Yeah, how else does it's it's written in the Old Testament? He stretches out his arm, right? <laughs> and this is where the Jews think it's their their little culture, you know, their little I gotta wrap my my arm up as a band and all that. Just pretending. It's the holy arm and what makes an arm holy? Two needles go into the arm, which is a dialysis machine, and it goes into a dialyzer and the blood gets washed. <laughs> yeah, because my blood's washed. It's cleaned. <laughs> Deuteronomy 26, 19, And I'll make thee high above the nations, which thee have made in praise, and in name, and in honor, and that thou mayest be a holy people unto the Lord thy God, as he hath spoken. <laughs> Because the commandments, I'm showing you where they're located. The real ones, the Paleo-Hebrew ones. The where, the where the Jews are, I'm trying to teach them to go. Not this fake Israel. So this is how I bring peace to the earth. Because the true Jews, because the, 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 the 11 tribes are here in North America here already. Right? We're already here. Just scattered. The last tribe is the Jews. They're, 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 they're the lost tribe. I'm trying to bring them back into the United States, where the Ten Commandments were. This where they're supposed to be. That's where they're located. That's where they're supposed to be. This is how God moves mountains, <laughs> right? So I'm fulfilling that. Deuteronomy 29, 29, 11, 11. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed. And believe and belong to us and our children forever, that we may do the words of this law. My soul thirsts for God. Okay, Ezekiel thirty four eleven. I will both search my sheep and seek them out. You know, right here. Because that, because Jeremiah seventeen thirteen. Because the, they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. You know, you know where Jesus is talking. Where Jesus in the, he was writing on the sand. Right. That this is where he got that from. Because he already, because he already knew they already forsaken God. This is why he wrote down on the sand. This is what they're talking about. Write, write their names in the in the dirt, because which is symbolically saying that these are the ones that are going to perish in the dirt. They're going to be dead because they've disobeyed God. You know the priest that murdered Jesus. This is what see. This is the lack of understanding that the the jewish people the jewish nation do not understand you have to understand why you went into the holocaust and you can't use the holocaust as a way you know to justify your lies and your claim to the holy land no you can't use it to say well if you don't if, if you're saying this against the jews you're anti-semite like that's your 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 reason your all this well, nobody knows why the Jews suffered. Everyone knows that it was the Jews' participation in the murder of Jesus. That's why they suffered the Holocaust. Do you think that Hitler didn't know what the Bible was saying either? And it is terrible a lot of people suffered during that time. But that's just a fulfillment to show exactly... What happens when you disobey God and his commands? And you go off and you follow idolatry. And that's where the Jews are in this point. They're waiting for the Messiah. There's no such thing as the Messiah. There's just God. And everybody is, is, is don't understand that. Because they're, because you, it's on the news all over. A lot of, because people are waking up. They're seeing the treachery, treachery between the Jews and what they're doing. You go and you go online right now. Here, I'll even show you. Oh, an hour is coming up. Look at this false teacher here. You don't teach it to make yourself known. How am I supposed to? I'm teaching what God's saying. 
Look at this guy. Mr. Expert here, this white devil here. I, I don't see this written in the, in the Bible, but let's, let's make something up. Who cares what the New Testament? It's all men's opinions. Doctrines of devils. So basically what he's saying, because the New Testament overrides what God's commandments are. And he gets that from Paul, you know, the murderer of Jesus. Well, let's see what he has to say. No one cares to listen to what he says because he's a false teacher. He's a false Christ. Simple disagreement. <laughs> I'm teaching about the gospel of God, not the gospel, the false gospel of Christ. It's told us to, to really put our effort into bringing in this harvest of souls. He told that to the people back in the early New Testament days, because those people are gone now. How many were brought in? Each generation is told to send more laborers into the harvest to ask God. It's about it's God. Not I should have said it that way. But we as well will do that. All right. So anyway, there's no point in uh, teaching him. He just, he just doesn't understand what he's talking about. When sincere ministers are teaching corrections regarding the false gospels and doctrines, they must be sure are not using persecution methods used by counterfeit teachers and preachers. In other words... They should not use insults or attempts to misplace humor that could degrade or their side of biblical debate teaching. God forgive this teacher, me, for I've used such methods to some degree in the past. Well, first of all, oh yeah, see, let's use Paul's words here. Ephesians 5.4 Neither filthiness or foolish taking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving thanks. And... And <laughs> it doesn't matter what Paul says, like I keep saying, he's just his opinion. It's not, it's not what we're supposed to be learning. Isaiah 43, 11, I even, I am the Lord beside me and there's no savior. That's what God's saying. God is saying, I both search my sheep and seek them out. Right? Because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. Jeremiah 32, 17. Ah, Lord God, be, behold, thou hast made the heaven and earth. This is what you're supposed to be teaching, not what Paul the dumbass is saying. And here's what Jesus is actually saying. Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. Yeah, he's telling you, you're going to stand before God, guys. So he's trying to prepare you for my house, Jason's house. Be ye therefore for perfect, as even as your Father's heaven is perfect. Do you think he's teaching what, I, what I'm showing you? Do you think he's teaching what Jesus is saying? This is what Jesus is saying. For many shall come in my name, saying, I'm Christ, and shall deceive many. Then if a man shall say unto you, Lo, here's Messiah, or there, believe it not. All right? Okay, whose salvation is it? What? Well, according to this, I cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God. So it's God's salvation. This is why you stand before God, because it's God that gains the salvation. Because God is sitting on the throne. Yeah, I'm trying to show you that. And the Lamb is just sitting there with him. The Lamb's not doing nothing. He's just sitting there observing. <laughs> because he's at this point, he finished what he needed to do. That's all. Jesus is done. Now it's God's here standing before him. And this is what this guy's attempting to use. Paul's, the devil, the murderer. <laughs> so it doesn't matter if you're a Christian or not. There's a lot of good people in this earl that don't need to be a Christian to be a good person. But like I said, their idol is the Christian. That's an idol. And that's what they have to let go. Because if they don't let go, how are you supposed to see God? Right? 
So anyways, again, I just wanted to make a quick note on uh, how you identify who the devil is. The devil's a murderer, right? Like I said in, uh, they forget, uh, you know, Revelation 21 verse 8. So the murderers, you know, Paul, the murderer, he's still not getting away with his crime. So if you're reading from Paul's letters, well, guess what? You're facing judgment. Bear the fearful, unbelieving. See, this is who they are. These The Christians that are on YouTube, you know, preaching the false gospel of Christ, right? This is the fearful, unbelieving. The, abom the abominable and murderers, right? Paul's a murderer. And whoremongers, sorcerers, and idolaters. Idolaters being Christianism, Judaism, and Islam. That's idolatry. And all liars shall have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. This is the second death. See, the second death people don't understand. Because you're going to die once. Okay? We're all, we all die. Okay? Like I died. I already died. Okay? I stood before the throne. This is where people will, will this is where the judgment is. They're going to everyone's going to stand before the throne when you die. Okay? And you need the seal of God. You need God's seal so then you can be born you can be born again. Right? You'll be granted another existence on earth. It's called the cycle of life, guys. It's called reincarnation. But you need God's seal. That's the that's the holy name. That's my name. Seven two. Remember, I told you with Genesis, Genesis uh, chapter two, verse two, right? Which is twenty two, the end of Revelations, as in Revelation twenty two, right? <laughs> so that's what that's talking about. So two. Which is talking about that verse in verse chapter or verse two, right? On the seventh day God finished his worst, on the seventh day he rested. Seven seven. And then two two. Seven two seven two. Are you is it paying attention? Are you are you getting it now? The beginning and the end. <laughs> See nobody will ever teach this stuff what I'm showing you and how it all fits. Fits like a glove. <laughs> That's what Jim Carrey would say. And I saw an angel ascending from the east. This is who Jesus was, right here. He had the seal of living God. So he had my name already. That's why we see it in the Bible. He hid the name. This is why he was trying to tell you there's a hidden path that not many find, which is what I'm trying to show you, God's voice throughout the Bible. It has to be declared from the beginning and the end. It's like a river. Right? Like I told you, a river goes this way and this way and that way. And that's how you understand God's voice through the Old Testament. Right? The seal of God is my name. 7-2, which is 7-11. Right? Friday the 13th, July, August, September, October, November, spell out Jason. See, people know. So, now if you look at the, the dark side, this is the, this is the terrible day of the Lord because, you know, when the truth comes out, it's represented as Friday the 13th, something terrible, right? Jason. July, August, September, October, November, right? This is why it's a unique, because it's the Lord's calendar. You guys understand? Oh, right here.
All right, so anyways, you can see it. I'm trying to get a bigger picture. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not going to give me a, a bigger picture. So, But you get my point. All right, so you know that uh, I was born in Leo. This is where the, the, you know, the line of Judah comes from, right? I was born in Leo. I was also born in the year of the dragon. Okay, and my spirit name is a Thunderbird. So I have I'm very pretty powerful uh, spirits behind me, guys. <laughs> right, this is why I was able to understand everything with ease. So anyways, I want to show you, I shared a little note when I was a boy. In grade one, the teachers used to do uh, tests on me because I was able to uh, understand things even before they would even know. Right. So, anyways, they used to give me this, uh, these flip, these these flashcards, right? And on one side it's blank, and the other side it has the what I'm to see, right? Because I'm able to see things, right? So, anyways, the lady used to say, "Well, Jason, what do you see in this image?" And it was just a blank. So I would give her the answer that would, you know, the card that would have the image on it. I would tell her what it, what it was, and she was just like, "Whoa, that's amazing!" <laughs> you know what I mean? Until I actually told her, you know, I'm just grade one, you know, I was already rocket sciences. <laughs> so, because what I meant by that is because if she didn't know that there was an actual window behind me, right? So it was reflecting what I was able to see on that card. I didn't tell her at first. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just, I just wanted to mess around with her. But this is, uh, this is their arrogance. Do you know what I mean? You know, messing around me, taking me out of school, you know. Well, this is an Indian, you know what I mean? Uh, we got to set him back, you know what I mean? By uh, doing tests on him, you know. So I was messing around with him. Until she actually, until I told her. But she was just like, so anyways, they stopped doing that. Right? And then another time in grade four, I was in Outlook already. Well, I did that. They did that in Lucky Lake. That's where I grew up in grade one. Right. And then we moved to Outlook. And uh, this is grade four. We're learning multiplication tables, right? And my aunt had just recently bought, uh, about a year ago, uh, two sets of encyclopedias. Man, I went through those. I read them all, including my Bible. I put them all together. This is where I gave God the knowledge and how everything all fit, how I figured it all. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I read a lot. So, anyways, we're learning multiplication tables, right? And I happen to be, like I said, I'm led to things, right? So I happened to uh, came across uh, the multiplication table in the multi in the encyclopedia. So I cut it out that picture, <laughs> right? So I put it in, in, and we had these uh, desks, right? They were open, right? So I was able to put that little image right there. I was able to see it. Right? So when the tests came, I kept getting 100%. <laughs> right? Until probably about, you know, I'd say probably about a couple months go by, maybe three, the, the teacher comes walking behind my desk. I didn't have, happen to no, notice her, right? She snuck up behind me, right? And anyways, because the teacher kind of figured, what's this kid up, up to? He's the only one getting 100%, right? So... She was, you know, she wanted to see what I was up to. <laughs> so, anyways, i get every test, you know, because I would automatically get it done right away and hand it in and say, I'm all done, teacher. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was always like that. You know what I mean? I didn't, uh, you know, I, I people mess around with me, I'll mess around with them back, right? That's what I'm doing today with the word, right? So, anyways, uh, the teacher was behind me, you know, I had no clue in here. I was about to hand my my my, te uh, my test page or paper back. I turn around, get up, she's standing right there. <laughs> she's like that. And I didn't know she caught on. So he said, Jason, can I see what's that's in your desk? I said, uh, um, um, here I'm caught all red handed, right? I'm just beaming probably red. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just, I got caught. Um, do you really have to? <laughs> you know what I mean? So I was, I was just, that's what I was thinking, you know, and I was like, I didn't know what to do. I was just, so, so 
So she come into my desk. She opened. She said, uh, she didn't say anything at all. Right? She didn't say anything. She just she just left me with that multiplication table, right? But I know that she knew that I was very clever, right? I still am. This brings me to another time when we're uh, the church I attended in Outlook or in Saskatoon. When we moved to Saskatoon was Bay Park uh, Baptist Church, right? And like I was very I was, like I was a born leader. I still am a born leader, right? So the, the the youth group, right? We'd always have these Friday out Friday night evenings. So they'd always come up with ideas, and they always listen to my ideas. Until one of the ideas, they said, "Let's go camp. Let's go uh, canoeing." I didn't think they were going to laugh. The, 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 the instructor was going to actually listen, but they did. So we went on a three day camping journey down, you know, Saskatchewan River, right? from Saskatoon to Duck Lake, right? And we'd go, we camp for the night, right? And and they, we'd take the canoes and take us back to Saskatoon, right? So I got tired of uh, uh, rowing, right? So uh, I had the, this blanket, like, you know, uh, this perfectly square blanket, right? So I went and I, got, I went and grabbed some uh, dead trees, right? As uh, I went and got a mast and got two Right, and I attached the blanket to it and wrapped uh, in the middle of the canoe, right, and had it hoisted down so it never it was an anchor there, so it was a sail, right. And then I was able to put it up and you know put it down and you know and wrap it up with the with the, the, the the bindings I had, right, the rope I had, right. Very simple gimmick I, I made. So I put that on the on the on the canoe. Man, did I fly! <laughs> It was the most funnest thing ever, right? So the instructor said, Jason, slow down. <laughs> and I'm just zooming, right? And I, I put down the sail down, chill out there. And here I can see them all whoo, puffing, whoo, you know, trying to catch up, right? And I'm just sitting here, just chilling there, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right? And then, uh, oh, the girls, they always wanted to be in my, uh, they, they, that's what I said. If you see in my younger days, I was uh, the girls were always attracted to me, right? So all the alls they always fought trying to get into my canoe, right? <laughs> so, anyways, as soon as I I I zoom up ahead, I put the sail down and I'd chill out, and I let them catch up, right? And then probably the second day, the second night, they're you know they must have been falling behind, and they see me just zooming, right? The, 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 so the, 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 the six other canoes, right, they, they got, they tried to get the same idea, right, you know, try and grab, get a sail and have it all together, but it would never work for them, right, they, they, they would collapse, right, because they didn't have the structure, right, do you see, even what I'm talking about, with what I'm learning is trying to show you, right, that you need to build everything on a, on a firm sail, because it'll it'll make you go, right? But if you don't have that, you know, if you have a group and all that sort of stuff, and they're all unstructured, that sale will fall apart. That's what the Christian religion is is facing right now. They're facing their their uh, Christendom collapsing right before their eyes, and they know it, right? And uh, this is what the Bible refers to as the great falling away. Right? Because why they're falling away is because God's kingdom is being established. Because I have established it. Okay, I have established my name. Right, whether you like that or not, that's not my fault. Right, I've already seen death. You guys haven't. Until you've seen death, and you have defeated death, you have nothing. You don't even have your name in the book. Right, so you better get with the program. And understand what I'm trying to teach you and help others because if you don't help others you're just as guilty as your neighbor so you get your butts out there you should you you pass on my videos how else do we help people right because that's a goal it's not about us it's about helping your neighbor right if you're not helping your neighbor what's the point 
of you understanding who God is. So, anyways, I'd like to thank you. I appreciate you all. Love the Lord your God with your heart, mind, and soul. I didn't come to take away all the prophets that came to fulfill. Thank you, and have a good day.